What is going on YouTube, Chizzy here, and I'm back with another Pokemon Emerald Kaizo Monotype Elite Four Challenge. Last time, we took on the highly requested Bug Type, which was very difficult. I won't spoil the result, but as always, there are links in the description to my very organized playlist, where you can find that video, as well as the other Monotypes that we've done so far. Anyways, today we're going to be taking a step back from the crazy impossible challenges we've done lately, like Fire and Bug, and take on something a little more manageable in the Flying Type. The birds are known for a few things. Being weak to Stealth Rock, which fortunately doesn't exist yet in the third generation, being a crucial ground immunity to the ever so common Earthquake spam, and being pretty good offensively since only Electric, Rock, and Steel are able to resist their high power stab moves. Will we be able to defeat the Kaizo League today? Let's get straight into this. As always, I just want to say thank you to everyone who helped reach the like goal in the bug video. You guys absolutely blew 2,000 likes out of the water. Let's try for that again today. I'm not going to get carried away and ask for 3,000 now. Don't worry, let's chill and stick with 2,000. Also, subscribe and hit the bell button to stay updated on my latest content, or if you're just an awesome person and want to support me in what I do. And without further ado, let's head over to the team builder. By now, you guys are all familiar with my thought process when I build my teams. We're going to do step one as always, which is to filter out the garbage. And boom, there we go. Yes, I know I just pissed off a ton of Nostalgia fans again by taking out Butterfree and Pidgeot, but what have I always said? This is Emerald Kaizo we're talking about, people. You guys know what the next step is. Let's get rid of the unavailable Pokemon. I did get a few comments last video, so I figured I'd clarify. Emerald Kaizo does give you access to all 386 or whatever Pokemon there are in the 3rd gen Nat decks, but for the sake of this challenge series, I'm only allowing Pokemon who can be found before the Elite Four. So what this means for us is we're about to lose out on a ton of great Pokemon in Aerodactyl, the three Kanto Legendary Birds, the two Johto Legendary Birds, Ninjask, which we talked about in the last video, and the homie Rayquaza. Now that that's out of the way, everybody else is fair game, so let's take a look at what's guaranteed for me to add onto the team. I did not have to hesitate for this one at all. I'm starting out with Dragonite because not only is it a freaking Dragonite, but they buffed it a little bit in this ROM hack by giving it thick fat. That makes Dragonite only two times weak to ice, which is crucial for me against Glacia, and the pseudo legend stats in general are just too OP to pass. It's also got access to a buffed priority extreme speed, but we'll save that discussion for the moveset section. I feel like I'm doing a preview for the Dragon Monotype at this point, but my next choice was Salamence. Obvious reasons again, it's fast and has great coverage as a mixed attacker, so not a difficult choice there at all. Third guarantee, as much as I hate it, is Crobat. We all saw how effective it was in the Poison Monotype video. It's so good against the Kaizo League in particular because it outspeeds as fast as possible Pokemon Deoxys with a badge boost. Great revenge killer and great addition to the team. The fourth guarantee for me was Scyther. Yes, we're bringing it back two videos in a row. I absolutely love the way it helped me with the myriad of psychic types such as Latios that otherwise are incredibly annoying for this team. As if we haven't had enough of fast Pokemon, I went with Dodrio as my final guarantee because it received a plus 10 boost in speed, which gives it incredible offensive presence with both 110 attack and 110 speed, which puts it above all the other normal flying brethren by far. Those five were the Pokemon I was very sure about about, but I had a lot of trouble picking this last one. The first thing I noticed was that even with Thick Fat on Dragonite, my entire team is still very weak to Ice, and that's not going to fare well against Glacia's Swift Swim team that is riddled with Ice Beam users. I had to immediately eliminate Altaria for that reason, plus it's really not good since Emerald Kaizo takes out all setup moves such as Dragon Dance anyways. I took out Skarmory because it's not going to be able to take on Glacia's Rain Boosted Hydro Pumps, and physical defense isn't as needed in this particular challenge. That pretty much leaves us with Zard and the Water Flyings. You you guys might be surprised with my pick here, but I actually went with Mantine. I know, y'all think I'm crazy right now, but Charizard really wasn't all that useful in the Fire Monotype. Gyarados suffers the same issue as Altaria with Kaizo banning setup moves, and the fact that it can't make use of its special coverage in Gen 3. And then Pelipper, as much as I used it in my first playthrough of Kaizo, is just a Pelipper. I'm sorry guys, I think Mantine is the missing piece I need since I was looking for some special bulk. It apparently got a boost in its HP and its spdef is incredible as it is, and although Kaizo stripped away its water absorb, it gets Swift Swim which can take advantage of Glacia's weather. And that's going to be the team we're running with, so let's go ahead and take a look at their movesets. I'm going to be playing out this challenge a little differently than normal. We're used to the Quick Claw Explosion strategies, but not a single flying type has access to Explosion. Which makes sense, because it's not every day that a bird just spontaneously combusts in thin air. 
Anyways, first mon up is Dragonite. Nickname is a play on Taco Bell and Drake Bell. We already went into detail about its ability, but we're running Adamant, full physical set on this thing. It's holding a Silk Scarf to take full advantage of E-Speed, and as I said earlier, E-Speed got buffed to 100 base power, which is insane for a priority move. We also have Rock Slide, which is so important to hit Glacius Ice types and the many flying types in this league. Earthquake for excellent physical coverage, and Aerial Ace, weak as it is, is just a reliable stab move, especially for Phoenix. Phoebe's double team spammers. Like I said, Salamence aka Easy for Ments, that's an esports reference by the way, fits the role of mixed attacker for our team. I'm gonna be running Hasty to maximize its speed without lowering either side of its attack. Intimidate kinda helps compensate the drop in defense, and we'll be holding the Sharp Beak to power up our strongest move, Sky Attack, which is basically Brave Bird in this ROM hack and comes off our higher physical attack. Although Mensa's special is lower, Draco Meteor is the other stab, Fire Blast is great coverage that I don't really have for steals such as Metagross and Jirachi, and Crunch is reliable to hit Psychics and Ghosts without dealing with recoil. Crobat's back again with the same exact moveset. I'll explain really quickly. Lonely Nature is because I naturally outspeed the entire league anyways without a speed boost, and I need all the attack I can get while physical defense is really not necessary. We're holding another Shark Beak to boost Crobat's Air Slash, which is his most spammable move. In this game, Poison Fang is buffed to 90 base power with a chance of Toxic, Shadow Ball is specifically to 1v1 Deoxys, and just like last time, Giga Drain is pretty much here for Swampert. Scyther is another Pokemon we've used before, so there's not much to go into detail with. We're still holding Silver Powder to boost X Scissor, but I did swap out Aerial Ace for Steel Wing just in case I need to hit Glacius Ice types a bit harder. For Dodrio, I know I'm running the wrong ability with Runaway, but honestly, I couldn't pass on this one. It's got really good IVs, and I don't think Early Bird is a life or death situation in the Kaizo League. Sharp Beak is the item of choice once again. I believe you can only get one Silk Scarf in this game, which I'm using on Dragonite already, but at least it boosts our pretty weak Drill Peg. Dodrio doesn't have access to Sky Attack, aka Brave Bird in this game, but it does get the normal type recoil move in double edge which hits incredibly hard, quick attack because I can never get enough priority, and Endeavor is here for emergency situations. And last but not least, we have our favorite cringy TikToker, Mantine. We're running Calm Nature to boost its insanely high special defense even more. Just take a look at that bulk. And I know you guys are probably wondering about that Miracle Seed. Chizzy definitely screwed up and put the wrong item, right? Well, let's take a look at its moveset. We're running Surf, Ice Beam, and Toxic for obvious reasons, but remember, Emerald Kaizo bans setup and support moves, so we can't even have Rest or Protect or anything. I simply could not think of a final move to put on this thing, and then it dawned on me that I will really be needing this Pokemon for Glacius, Swampert, and Dugong. The best thing I could think of was to put HP Grass on this man team. Now, this deserves a thumbs up or something, guys. I I cannot even explain to you just how long it took to find a Mantine with HP Grass. Let me explain the process. You gotta use a synchronized Mon with a Calm Nature to have a 50% chance of finding a Mantine with Calm, and then you gotta teach them Hidden Power, go and find a Kecleon to see what Hidden Power it is, and by the time I found one that fit all those requirements, you gotta check its IVs and make sure that hidden power isn't weak. Long story short, after a bajillion hours, I finally found one that was good enough, I think this Mantine's hidden power is base like 61 or 63 power, which is fine enough. Anyways, that's the backstory behind all my movesets. Enough brainstorming, let's just go and see how we fare against the league. Sydney's up first, and as always, he leads off with his Mega Mega Sableye. I say this every video because Emerald Kaizo dang near shuckled this thing's defenses. Anyways, since nothing is super effective against it, the strongest move on my team is Stab, Sharp Beak boosted Sky Attack from Salamence, and fortunately, it's a clean to a KO on Sableye. The damage from HP Rock and all that recoil hurts, but we're still alive and well for Sydney's next Pokemon Machamp. I swear this is like the third video in a row where he brings Machamp champ in on something that just went for a super effective move. Or maybe he just wanted me to die to recoil. Point is, it's a double down and I bring in my other dragon as Sydney goes to Jolteon, which is a perfectly fine matchup for me. Thunderbolt does a very weak amount and Earthquake absolutely rocks Jolteon's world, and then Alakazam comes out next. Zam and its paper defenses are not going to appreciate an E-Speed. It actually almost one-shots it, but it's not even necessary as Dragonite also lives Psychic. I'm telling y'all right now, do not underestimate this thing's bulk. 
After finishing off Alakazam with the second E speed, Tauros comes out next and gets off an Intimidate. My best play is just to get off as much damage as possible with a minus one E speed before going down to double edge. All that residual damage should put Tauros in range of Dodrio. We give Tauros a taste of its own medicine here with double edge and knock it out. Sydney's last Pokemon is Houndoom who got buffed to 110 speed, but we do have the nature and IVs helping us out, so Dodrio gets off three quarters of Houndoom's health before going down to Heat Wave. And we still have plenty of Pokemon in the back such as Crobat who can just revenge kill this thing for the easy victory over Sydney. In my bug monotype video, Scyther put in work against Phoebe, so I'm gonna try the same thing again, leading off with it against Gengar. My idea was to have its Thunderbolt knock me into Swarm range, but I actually get the flinch with Air Slash, which means we don't even have to take damage at all. Just like last video, Phoebe is programmed to do the same exact thing, where she brings in Ludicolo to die to a single X Scissor, then decides to be foolish again and bring out Gardevoir to also die to an X Scissor. Major deja vu moment here, I'm pretty sure we got an unnecessary crit on Gardevoir in our last video as well, but anyways, the right Pokemon Crobat finally comes out, so I switch into Dragon to sponge and air slash. Unfortunately, Crobat goes for hypnosis and puts us to sleep before we can get off rock slide damage, and on top of that, it also crits us with air slash the next turn. I even try to go for a priority E speed, but Dragonite stays sleeping like a baby and we go down without touching Crobat. My next best answer for this thing is just to bring in my own Crobat for a nice little mirror match. Cue the Spider-Man meme. The luck goes back in our direction as Phoebe's Crobat misses Hypnosis and we're able to finally take this annoying thing out with three Air Slashes. After Crobat drops, Phoebe's last two Pokemon are her buffed double team spammers, Dusclops and Sableye. She goes into Dusclops first and with the defense boost that it got in this game, super effective Shadow Ball is doing no kinds of damage. She does in fact get up a double team, but Crobat is able to hit the second Shadow Ball to put it in range of just one more attack. Phoebe decides to start attacking here rather than setting up further double teams, so I'm on pace to beat this 1v1, but we miss our third Shadow Ball, causing Crobat to drop to Dusclop Shadow Ball. Here's the thing though, that miss might have actually been a blessing in disguise. Hear me out on this, now I can go to Salamence and KO this thing with Sky Attack, and also have a much better Pokemon out for her final Mon Sableye. Since we're in set mode, if I had killed Dusclops and had Crobat out on Sableye instead, I would have just been set up fodder since I can't touch it, but now that we have Salamence, I can just go for the 2-hit KO once again with Sky Attack, taking out Mega Mega Sableye, and defeating Phoebe. The battle against Glacia is the one I'm most concerned about. If you've seen any of my other monotype videos, you would know that she's got the auto rain, swift swim strategy that just sweeps through teams mindlessly if you're not prepared. And well, that is exactly why I brought Mantine, who I lead off with against her Glalie. Even though Glalie was buffed to have 100 speed, with Swift Swim, Mantine easily outspeeds and goes for Surf here, which is a clear 2 at KO while Glacia gets up a spike. The funny thing is, she doesn't know I'm rocking a mono flying team where her spikes aren't going to be able to do anything. Glalie goes down to the second rain boosted Surf, and we basically took that thing out for free. Out comes Regice, we all know this thing has Thunder, which is why she brought it out, so I make the switch into Dragonite since I not only can take the hit, but I can also aim at Regice's lower defense stat with super effective Rock Slide. It does about three quarters of its health, but we don't get the flinch. I actually thought I could take an Ice Beam here due to Thick Fat, but I was wrong. Regice takes down Dragonite, but we got the damage we needed for Scyther to come out and revenge kill it. With that big legendary threat gone, Waylord comes out next, and this thing got the Sableye treatment as well, and is basically a legendary in its own right. Kyogre, step aside. There's no point in hitting this thing on its special side since it basically became a Blissey, so I go for X Scissor to do as much damage to this thing as possible before going down to a single Water Spout. Fortunately though, the recoil it received is just enough for Salamence to revenge kill it with Sky Attack. After Waylord drops, another threatening sea creature, Swift Swim Dugong, comes out to terrorize our team. But remember from the team builder, we brought Mantine for a reason, and it was specifically for this moment. I switch it in to absolutely tank an Ice Beam, Dugong is doing no kinds of damage to my high special defense whatsoever. Unfortunately, neither is my HP Grass, it's super effective but doing just a tiny bit more which shows how weak Mantine is. I mean, to be fair, we also don't have a full power HP Grass here, but Eventually, we inch our way slowly but surely to finally take out Dugong before it can kill us. And that is exactly what we needed. Mantine takes on the biggest threat to my team 1v1, then Swampert comes out and we can still outspeed with Swift Swim and get off the HP grass before it takes us out. 
Even though it's times 4 super effective, I didn't expect it to kill, but it does more than enough to where Crobat, who is still faster than Swift Swim Swamper, can just KO it with another grass move in Giga Drain. I gotta say, as much as Mantine has done nothing for me in the other battles, it was 100% needed or I would have never been able to beat Glacia. Lapras is her last Pokemon, Poison Fang doesn't do a whole lot as it goes for Ice Beam and nearly takes me out. Unfortunately, Crobat isn't going to be able to get off another attack since Lapras has the priority Ice Shard, but at this point, I still have Salamence and Dodrio. I'm 99% sure Mence can live in Ice Shard from that range, but Glacia doesn't even go for it anyways, so Mence drops Lapras with Sky Attack for a very close 2-0 victory. Against Drake, I decided to go for a similar approach to the Monobug video once again and lead Scyther against Latios. I know X Scissor is a roll and I got the minimum in the last video, so can I get the high roll this time around? Yeah, no, never me. Latios takes it with a sliver of HP and knocks Scyther out with Draco Meteor. As we all know though, Draco Meteor is a recoil move in Emerald Kaizo, so it is a double down. At least we got a huge threat out of the way though. I bring in Dodrio because I felt like it was a pretty neutral switch in. On hindsight, now that I look back at it, that might have been dumb, since he could have brought in Tyranitar and set up Dragon Dances in my face and swept, but that's not the case here. Kingdra comes out and takes a lot of damage from Double Edge before knocking me out with yet another Draco Meteor. At this point though, Kingdra's in range of just about anything. I go into Crobat to revenge kill it, and then the big threat Dragonite comes out next. Did I mention Dragon Dance earlier? Poison Fang does a minuscule amount of damage, and Drake is able to get up not one, but two Dragon Dances on Crobat. Once again, Poison Fang doesn't do much, but at least it appears that his Dragonite is in range of my own Dragonite's E-Speed. Crobat takes one for the team and goes down easily to Rock Slide, and now it's the moment of truth. Can we stop this sweep with our own Dragonite? That answer is yes, E-Speed does in fact take out Drake's Dragonite, who didn't go for an E-Speed of its own, and then he brings in Salamence, who I can actually afford to switch in Mantine on to sponge a Draco Meteor. Somehow, Drake missed the memo that you can move Tutor Sky Attack onto Mence. He only has Air Slash, which I managed to live despite my weak physical defense, and Mantine actually wins the 1v1 by KOing Salamence with a x4 super effective Ice Beam. Mantine's not done being extremely valuable against big threats though. I'm able to outspeed and get off a Surf on Tyranitar for half damage before finally going down to Ancient Power, but at this point, it's definitely in range of Dragonite's Earthquake, leaving Drake with just one Pokemon left. That one Pokemon is Latias versus my two Dragons. Now, with the Soul Dew, this thing could still be a problem. I know I can take one Dragon Claw from this thing. E-Speed is my strongest move and it does barely 50%. Drake misplays here, I've said this time and time again, he loves to overly set up. If I were him, I would have just gone for a crit Dragon Claw, but now even if E-Speed doesn't kill, I have Mence to outspeed in the back. Fortunately, we don't even have to worry about that though, as we get the 2 8 KO with E-Speed and defeat Drizzy Drake. Last but certainly not least, it's champion time. Let's see if we can go through this whole challenge undefeated. Steven leads off with Metagross. I could 2 KO it with Salamence's Fire Blast, but I don't want to miss or take damage, so I decided to lead Mantine who can resist Meteor Mash. By the way, can we just appreciate how perfect these damage rolls were? The first Meteor Mash did exactly 100 damage to Mantine, who has 300 HP flat, and then after I get off a of Surf, the second one does another perfect 100 to put me at 100 HP left at level 100. I don't know, I just really appreciate numbers and that overall sequence and thought I would share. Anyways, what I don't appreciate is Steven not letting me kill Metagross here. He switches out to Starmie on the Surf, saving Metagross for later, which is honestly a good play. He can KO me back with Thunderbolt now, but that just gives me a free turn with Scyther to come in and use X Scissor. Deja vu moment from the last video yet again, Starmie goes down and the incoming Mewtwo cannot kill me with non-stab Flamethrower. Just like last time, it perfectly puts me into Swarm range and makes X Scissor one shot the Mewtwo when it normally can't. Steven clearly didn't learn anything from our last battle, he brings in Deoxys to get quick attacked which definitely ensures a Shadow Ball revenge kill from Crobat. After Crobat eliminates Steven's biggest threat, there's just a couple more to go, Aerodactyl comes in and we've been in this exact same situation before. All I need to do is just get off damage on Aerodactyl with Shadow Ball to help another teammate take it out. Even though Shadow Ball doesn't do too much, it definitely helps that Crobat tanks an Ancient Power and brings Aerodactyl down to about 40% health too, cause after Crobat falls, Salamence can just come in, 
get off the Intimidate, which should allow me to take an Ancient Power, and be at a point where Draco Meteor's recoil should be nowhere near killing me. Steven's last two members are his Steel types. Metagross was already damaged, but I don't see Crunch being able to kill from this range, so I have to Fire Blast. Luckily, we do manage to hit, taking Metagross down. And then, Steven's last Pokemon is Jirachi, who can take a Fire Blast and is able to KO me back with Meteor Mash. He does get the plus one attack with Meteor Mash, which is slightly concerning, but I know Dragonite is just too bulky and can still survive with a decent amount of health and finish the game off with an Earthquake. And just like that, once again, we are Monotype Champions of the Emerald Kaizo League, this time with Flying Types. Thank you all so much for watching this video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to click that thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new and want to see more content, leave a comment on what type you want to see next. Remember, I can only do one type at a time, so I can't fulfill everyone's request right away, but it is a way of helping me see what the people want sooner. Also, it's just great for the YouTube algorithm. Anyways, I'll see you guys next video, maybe a full playthrough, maybe another monotype, I don't even know yet myself. Stay tuned to find out. Deuces.